There has been a recent discussion in the British media on the Commonwealth that has sent similarly to the pair who has used us as fodder for their documentary. A sin of talking for us and not being or even knowing us. The conversation has gone a little like this, and this is my rendition of how they both sound together. Let us use the historical yet painful legacy of 2.5 billion people and apply it to ourselves. Note, because I'm a small channel, I cannot even mention their names or I will not get any views. So we will refer to them as the two and you will see their picture up on the screen. Help me to get bigger and be a bigger channel so I can say their names without the grandmaster of doxing and protection for celebrities coming for me and so that he won't block me. So make sure to like, share and subscribe. This is Theorist Theories. Let us use the historical yet painful legacy of 2.5 billion people and apply it to ourselves. That seems common among the two and a bit among the British media, some of them at least. In the approach of using us, they stated, and this is the two, that the Commonwealth is a peer stunt. The audacity of the quote unquote experts to misinterpret the relationship between 56 multitudes of countries shows that there are no experts. The best expert, any Caribbean student may as well tell you, is that of Lloyd Best and Carrie Levitt even though they did a more Caribbean stance because they are from the Caribbean, Trinidad and Jamaica specifically, in their seminal piece, this can be applied to any state from the com Commonwealth. And in their work, the plantation economy, they speak to, in the simplest terms, the relationship between the agricultural plantation found in the Caribbean, and it may not even be agricultural. It may be any type of resource, may it be oil, may it be gold, may it be diamonds as in Africa, which were, and these faces are and have been in their work, referred to as the hinterland. And the UK or any colony mainstay being referred to as the metropole. The relationship shows the sucking of resources to benefit the metropole with little resources remaining for the hinterland, leaving the hinterland in poverty. By creating an entity such as the Commonwealth, the relationship is maintained, but with benefits allowed to the hinterland. Through trade agreements and other blessings, small countries previously drained of resources can work together to develop while remaining tethered to their abuser, who through scholarships, opportunities, and as I said previously, trade agreements can slightly pay for their sins. It looks, for example, through the Commonwealth Day that they usually have, that the royals have control over the independent state's operations. But that is not true, by the way. But when you are small, you may need all the help that you can get. Hence, unifications such as CARICOM and CARIFORUM. The relationship is not a PR stunt. Though formality, which has remained in my country, a sense of protocol to other countries have abided since our independence in the 1960s. Of course, we got that from Britain, but where will we have gotten anything else from? An MSNBC news anchor said that the Commonwealth was a vehicle to, quote unquote, teach us how to behave by stripping away our national identity. That's interesting, given that the US, though, have their history of colonization, though they have not taken any country over, they have done things to teach us how to behave by stripping away our national identity. But when you have been stripped, US 
or the UK, your oppressor cannot just leave you, lest you experience the hardships of Haiti. They still run the schools, the oppressor that is. They are the core of religion. And for all the local persons in power who were edu educated at their British universities, if it were not for Britain, who gave us the colonial minds or taught us how to behave, it would be our own because they would be using the British model. It is with time independence comes. When you know, as in my country, you can stand on your own two feet, you make that move. Oil may have been our vehicle. For Barbados recently, it was not tourism, in my view, but a level of efficiency of operations that occurred because they selected a stellar prime minister, the Honorable Miss Motley. As countries, like a teenager, realizes it has the skill to go out to work and realize their own potential, removal of the Commonwealth may occur. The enemy of the two, the British media, has talked about the Commonwealth of Nations, which comprise both independent and dependent nations without input from our various perspectives. One British who says he is tired of looking back in history and being told to, to pay today for the stuff done in the past. Now, we all know who this may be. You can see his face on the screen. And I'd like to pause from my script here and say that there is a need for an appropriate discussion because we are all not the same. And there may be a need to pay depending on the pains that have been incurred. Even in the attacking of the two, like the two, some British media use the Commonwealth as a crutch for making shallow points. They have been media that make solid points about our struggle, yes, but to use it as a cane against the two, the sin is worse, worse than the bad taste presence of Prince William and his wife in 2022 in, in Jamrock or Jamaica. While one may be royalist, the fact is the Commonwealth is not a tool to fight the two. The, dis the disrespect continues and they don't even know that they are doing it. This is the theorist. Here, a tragic irony that what Harry and Meghan are doing by banging on about race so much may actually be diminishing the impacts that genuine racism has on people. It's taking away from all the hard efforts of real race activists, race equality activists. It's taking away from their efforts. I mean, you know, the, the work I do with the Commonwealth about racial equality, and then you get people like this saying all these things, you think, 